Go ahead, Liz. Thanks, Jeannie. Um, okay. Can you see the slides? Uh, yep, there it goes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Liz Tanner. I'm the statewide OAT program coordinator with the Wisconsin DNR. And I'm just going to go over some updates quick regarding Wisconsin's OAT program. So um, just a quick rundown here. Organisms in trade is an invasive species pathway that encompasses the potential introduction and spread of invasive species through sale and trade. The goal of Wisconsin's Organisms in Trade program is to, I'm sorry here. Um, is to educate OIT pathway users on NR40, to seek compliance with state regulations, and to monitor sub-pathways, for which there are many within the OIT program. OIT is a pretty complex pathway, so program coordination relies pretty heavily on our partners. These partners include DATCAP, uh, Department of Agricultural Trade and Consumer Protection, law enforcement, AIS staff, partner groups, and citizens. For the sake of time, I'll go over specific facets of the program, but I won't dive too deep here. So to start off with, I'll talk about our partnership with DATCAP. Through an MOU, DATCAP inspects the vendors that they license. And they license any nursery growers that sell $250 or more a year in perennial plants. This partnership includes vendors like nurseries, hardware stores, suppliers, distributors, anything like that. When DATCAP inspectors find NR40 species within their trade, they share those findings with me. I have a consistent access to the database that has all of their NR40 findings for the season. When they find those NR40 findings, they issue an activity report and or a warning notice, depending on the situation and how frequently that business has invasive species. If a business continues to have invasive species for sale, they might organize a compliance meeting with that business to try to provide more in-person education and outreach because their efforts haven't seemed to be working. There is a lot of open communication between that cap and my position. So if I notice in their database that a specific business has a lot of violations, I can consult them if they think it needs to be escalated and vice versa. They can consult us if they find a nursery that consistently has violations and they think that enforcement might be necessary. In those cases, we consult with law enforcement and we have a discussion on whether or not enforcement is necessary. A few other parts um, of the DATCAP partnership, I provide yearly letters to nurseries with NR40 findings. The letters to this year's nurseries will be going out sometime this fall. I also provide outreach to suppliers. When DATCAP finds a nursery with NR40 findings, they get the name of the supplier and send them a violation notice to tell them you can't supply those invasive species to Wisconsin vendors. They also CC me onto those violation notices and I do additional education outreach to the suppliers. I also work with nurseries to manage incidental findings, one of which that um, comes up with some regularity is jumping worms. Um, these species are not being sold directly by the nurseries, but they are present and in need of management. And so in the case of jumping worms, I'll have a discussion with the nursery on how to manage their presence, as well as how to prevent them from spreading even further. And then lastly, I assist with outreach events. For example, this summer I helped staff their booth and provided outreach at the Milwaukee Center Garden Show. Some quick data here for NR40 nursery findings. This map shows NR40 findings across the state since 2015. Larger circles are locations with more findings. This bar graph shows the number of NR40 violations for each year since 2015. And as you can see, there is a general decline in the number of NR40 findings, um, with 2020 and 2021 being our lowest amounts. However, that could have been influenced by the pandemic. 
as fewer inspectors were visiting nurseries, fewer violations might have been found. And then um, 2022 data is preliminary. We're still, we might still be waiting on some inspectors to enter their data or some nurseries to be visited. However, there does seem to be a slight increase from 2020 to 2021. However, it's still slower than 2019. So the hope is that this downward trend is indicative of how many NR40 species are being sold in nurseries. And hopefully we continue to see a decline, which might indicate that the pathway is closing. Next, I'll talk about pet stores. So the goal of pet store outreach and monitoring is to conduct education and outreach to retail locations that may facilitate the trade of invasive species in Wisconsin, as well as monitor for NR40 regulated species in these pet stores. These vendors typically are vendors that do not meet requirements for licensing by DATCAP, and they sell aquarium and aquatic plants or animals. The Pet Store Outreach and Monitoring Group is composed of AIS staff, law enforcement staff, BOAT program coordinator, as well as some partners. Currently, the group is working on a draft monitoring protocol so that we can have consistent monitoring of these pet stores from year to year and person to person, and a draft visit log so that data can be collected consistently as well. Lastly, we have been working on piloting survey locations and training some partners to help us with this piloting phase. We have visited some locations by internal staff over the summer, and then over the fall and winter, we have some partners that will also be visiting some locations. <clears throat> Future work is going to involve revising the protocol and visit log after visits are done, and we get, we get feedback from our partners, as well as other groups that we will present to. We will also work on data management and storage. The goal is eventually for the data to be stored on SWIMS. And then lastly, once we have finalized the protocol, the visit log, and we have everything good to go, we can implement it on a statewide scale. So what exactly do these pet store visits look like? When one of us enters the store, we ask for the store, manage, the store owner or manager, and we make sure we adopt a friendly and non-threatening manner. We don't want to come across as DNR agents or anything like that. We're just there for education primarily. We explain our reason for visit and provide some outreach materials. And then we perform a meander style survey in which we peruse store aisles where live organisms are sold. We record any unknown species or NR40 regulated species, if any, that we find. Any findings are communicated with the owner and manager that we talk to. We request them to remove the regulated species from sale. If it is a prohibited species, they need to dispose of it or return it to the supplier. If it's restricted, they can move it from sale and keep it as they are allowed to possess it. However, we just wanna make sure they get it off the sale floor. Lastly, we get the name of the distributor that gave them the invasive species. So we can do further follow-up and education for them with them as well. Our goal is to present, prevent the sale of regulated species through education. However, we do acknowledge that sometimes education is not effective and invasive species still get sold. In these cases, we may have to resort to enforcement, but only as a last um, resort. This is our pet trade visit log that's currently in draft form. You can see the types of data that we're collecting as we're visiting these pet stores. The focus of the protocol and visit log is on pet stores specifically. However, it can be used for other OAT vendors, such as garden centers, bait dealers, or even online sales. A few quick data points here for NR40 pet store findings since 2012. Part of the difficulty here is data hasn't been collected every year because we don't always have a person in my position. So you can see here, there are large gaps in between where we had pet store visits. On top of that, different people might have different survey effort or protocols. So the goal of our protocol is to um, make that a bit more consistent. On the bottom row, you can see in 2022, those are the visits that have happened so far. 
However, that will be subject to change as we get more visits in. These are the different species. It's a bit of an overwhelming list, but the different species that have been found in pet store visits since 2012. And the highlighted species here are the species that have been found so far this year. Moving on quick to online sales. The online marketplace is an increasing sub-pathway for the sale of regulated plants and animals. This includes things like online auctions, internet discussions, or interest groups. Social media is a, another big way that we see online sales of invasive species. It can include plants and animals used for gardening, aquariums, consumption, pets, more. Online trade can lead to the introduction and dispersal of invasive species. So education is often the focus of online sale response. When an online sale is reported to me, I contact the vendor to educate them on Wisconsin's invasive species laws. There are several challenges associated with regulating online sales. Different states have different regulations, resulting in a difficulty with enforcement across state lines. It can also be hard to follow up on online sales, especially those done by individuals rather than businesses. By talking to an individual, they might remove their sale from an online platform, but still continue to do it, and there's no way for us to really follow up on that. Additionally, it can be difficult to even detect online sales of invasive species. I could spend a lot of time perusing these online auctions and marketplaces looking for invasive species, but it could take a long time. As a result, it is very helpful that when partners find invasive species for sale online to report them to me and I can follow up on that. Here's a quick example of an online sale that happened this year. Someone was attempting to sell aquarium water lettuce. It is a bit difficult to get in contact with these sellers um, as there's no way for our DNR Facebook to directly message them. So instead we do use snail mail currently. I get the name of the individual and we we're able to track down their address and we sell them, we send them this letter as well as educational materials. Lastly, I work a lot with law enforcement. Uh, the OIT program prefers to utilize education and outreach prior to beginning enforcement. Often, the sellers are not aware that Wisconsin's invasive species laws of Wisconsin's invasive species laws and are unknowingly in violation. However, enforcement may be necessary when we have repeatedly provided outreach, but the seller can, or supplier continues to sell invasive species. In these cases, I work with our partners to compile documentation and photos which are very important to pursue an enforcement. I then consult law enforcement to determine what enforcement might be needed, if any. This has actually allowed us to pursue citations for several DAPCAP licensed chain stores over the past year that have re repeatedly had violations and education outreach didn't seem to be working. We are hoping that when we have to employ enforcement that this might bring other sellers as well into compliance out of fear of also receiving a fine. The goal of all enforcement efforts, including warning notices, citations, or other charges, is to bring a person or business into compliance with NR40. Here I just have a, a quick breakdown of OIT communication. So if, when someone receives a report of an invasive species being sold, if it's an online sale, they can report it directly to me and I can do a follow-up. If it's an in-person sale, report it to your regional AIS coordinator and I will eventually be brought on board as well. And then the, um, on the top right is specific to pet store visits. If it's found during a pet store visit, you also would report it to your regional AIS coordinator and it will make its way to me too. The OIT program is funded through a GLRI grant originally awarded in 2019, the original grant funded law enforcement regulatory inspections and visits, OIT coordinator visits, outreach and education, and the resolution of multiple enforcement cases. Recently, we have also received an OIT grant extension, which will provide funding through 2025. This extends the current works, increases efforts into online sales, 
helps us to develop and maintain our partnerships, as well as develop new outreach materials. Speaking of which, I'll do a quick plug for our Gardener Alternatives brochure, which Jeannie had mentioned earlier. These are brochures being developed by a group of Minnesota and Wisconsin invasive species specialists. Um, there are going to be two brochures with similar layouts based on Mippin's Landscape Alternative brochure for woody species. So the one brochure will be water gardens, ring gardens, shoreline garden species, things like that, wet gardens. And the other one will be for non-woody terrestrial species. These brochures will provide alternatives to common invasive species. The brochures have been drafted and we plan to have finalized this month with hopefully having them available by the time uh, garden catalog season comes along. And with that, I don't know if I have question, time for questions, but I can take questions. We do have time for questions. Um, and there's been lots of stuff going on in the chat regarding the last um, presentation by Meg too. So um, does anyone have any questions for Liz? And before we wrap up, take a little break before doing our test drive on, on um... oh. Hey, uh, uh, I have a quick question for Liz. Um, Liz, do you only do aquatic invasives or are you also the point person for terrestrial as well? Also point person for terrestrial as well. 